Today we're going to look at a story that maybe you learned in Sunday school, remember from that. Um, I remember one of my Sunday school teachers bringing in this little uh, cardboard house with uh, some cardboard people laying down uh, a guy in a mat in through the roof. And uh, that just sort of stuck in my mind. So it was this story that maybe many of us have heard before. We're going to look at Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. But let's first look at our memory verse. Let's say it together. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6.33 And let's say it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6.33 And what that is supposed to tell us is that if we seek first the things of God, that He will provide for us all the other things that we would normally worry about. So, Mark chapter 2, 1 through 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the man, uh, the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and take your mat and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. So imagine you're one of these four people, and you have a friend who's paralyzed, and there's Jesus in town, and he can supposedly heal all kinds of ailments. And this poor friend of yours, he's, he hasn't been able to walk for who knows how long. So, so you, take, you take your friend because you know that Jesus can heal him, and you get there and there's no way to get in. There's, it's just too packed. So the, the roof of houses is mostly you know, made of mud and sticks and stuff like that. And so you decide, okay, we'll probably get in trouble for this, but we're going to dig through the roof because... Because our friend needs, needs to be healed. So you, you go, you climb up on the roof somehow with your friend carrying him, and, and somehow you dig through the roof and you, you lower him down there and right in front of Jesus. And then Jesus says to him, Your sins are forgiven. So this this determined group, they wanted their paralyzed friend to be healed. I mean, that's, that's why they brought him there. It, it introduces him. We don't know his name. He's just known as the paralyzed man, the paralytic. And that you were, they were expecting Jesus to, to heal him. You know, they were expecting, the, well, get up, take your mat, and go home, kind of a, kind of a thing. And instead, Jesus says, well, your sins are forgiven. Instead, Jesus forgives his sins. Now, the, the, it would be a human thing if, if you were one of those friends. It would be just the human thing to think to yourself, 
well, boy, this, is, this isn't what we wanted. This is kind of a ripoff. I mean, anybody can say your sins are forgiven and he still can't walk. I mean, we, we brought him here so he'd be healed. I mean, I can say, hey, your sins are forgiven. I mean, why, why is Jesus saying that? We don't know what they were thinking, but, but that, could be, that could be the human thought there. There's times when we put before God people who we want healed, and maybe he doesn't heal them, or maybe not right away. And sometimes maybe we wonder if God isn't listening to us. Because anybody can say those words, your, your sins are forgiven. I mean, anybody can say that. Those are, just, those are just words, right? And yet only God himself can actually forgive sins. Only God can say, hey, your sins are actually forgiven. Now, you and I, it's good for us, you know, when we're with other believers and such, it's good for us to say, to remind each other of that, you know, to remind each other, hey, you know, God has forgiven your sins. You know, that's, that's a good thing. We reassure each other that way. But Jesus Christ is the only way anyone's sins are actually forgiven. Otherwise, without Him, we're just saying empty words. We're just saying words that anybody can say. And Jesus is the only way that those sins are forgiven. So when it comes out of His mouth, it carries a whole lot more weight. So, if you look at the screen here with me, in the Apostles' Creed, it says we believe in the forgiveness of sins. What do you believe concerning the forgiveness of sins? I believe that God, because of Christ's atonement, will never hold against me any of my sins, nor my sinful nature, which I need to struggle against all my life. Rather, in His grace, God grants the righteousness of Christ to free me forever from judgment. So, because of Christ's atonement, God will never hold against us any of our sins or our sinful nature which we need to struggle against our entire life. It's only through Christ that our sins are actually forgiven. Now, something to think about in terms of all of Jesus' ministry, he did a lot of miracles, but every one of those miracles was meant to point to something bigger. Every miracle of Jesus was about proving something more important. Something more important than, than food and walking and seeing and speaking and those really important things that sometimes we take for granted. All of Jesus' miracles are meant to point to something more important than even those things. So when he fed the 5,000, for example, afterwards they followed him and they were expecting that, oh, maybe he would produce more food for them. Well, he kind of turned to them and said, you're, you're following me because you just want more food, but, but let me tell you something, I, I am heavenly food and if you eat the food that I give you then you'll never need to eat again when he healed the man who was born blind he said I have come into this world so that the blind will see and that those who see will become blind he was talking about something bigger that miracle is supposed to point us to that and so this paralyzed man he was healed to show two things. First, Jesus can forgive sins, as it says in verse 10. He says, you know, so that you would know that I do have authority to forgive sins. And then he says to the paralytic, get up. 
and walk. Because anybody can just say those words, but to actually make them happen is something, something else entirely. And only Jesus can both say it and make it happen. That's the point of this. Jesus can both say it and make it happen. And he did this miracle to say, look, I'm not just saying this. I'm not just saying that I can forgive sins. I really can forgive sins. And to demonstrate that, watch this. But it says something else too. Because all of Jesus' miracles are meant to point to something even more important. More important in this case than even walking. Forgiveness is more important than walking or having sound bodies. It would be better to be paralyzed for the rest of your life and have your sins forgiven than to not have your sins forgiven and be able to walk wherever you wanted to. Now, it's, it's a human thing to want to be able to see, to want to be able to uh, speak and eat and all of these things that Jesus provided in his miracles. It's human to want the ability to walk even rather than God's forgiveness. Because with walking, we can do that right now. And forgiveness is kind of this abstract concept, you know? It's not something that we can touch or taste or see. Walking is something that makes much more sense to us. And the benefits of walking are pretty obvious. But for the benefits of forgiveness, those are sometimes hard to see. You almost need to, to you need faith to be able to see the benefits of those. And walking involves our, our physical body, you know? You know, this, the, what we use every day. Forgiveness, that, that involves our spirit. And, and, and what's our spirit? I mean, how do, how do we... I mean, how do we even understand what, what that is? That's, that's not something that we can explain very easily. So it's a human thing to focus on what our body is going on with our bodies and not with our spirits. But what Jesus is saying here is that what's going on with your spirit is much more important than what's going on with your body. And I'm going, to heal your, I'm going to heal this man's body because I want you to know that I can heal the whole person, body and spirit. So it's human to want the ability to walk rather than to be forgiven. It's divine to realize it's better to be paralyzed than have unforgiven sin. And with an eye of faith, you can see that or understand that. It might take a while. For probably the majority of my life, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't really understand that. Maybe just, maybe just up here, but not really down here. You know, I, I would have known what, what answer to check on, on a test if I had to take that on a test. Oh yeah, it's better to be, have your sins forgiven, but if, uh, if suddenly I couldn't walk, you know, that would, that would be pretty devastating. Well, the Bible says, no matter what we might think or feel, the Bible says that it's better to be right with God than to even walk. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Seek God first. And then everything else comes later. It's better to be able to speak with God than to be able to run and jump. I mean, we take our prayers for granted. We can fold our hands and bow our heads and we can talk to God. And we just kind of think, oh, hey, that's, 
something easy, we can do that any time. But if our sins aren't forgiven, we can't do that. We can't do that unless Jesus has taken our sins away. And it's better to have God as your father than to have working legs. Without our sins forgiven, God is, God is not our father. We have made ourselves his enemies. That's the definition of sin. We have made ourselves the enemies of God. So it's better to have a father's love than even working legs. And this weekend we celebrate our nation's independence and we, we shoot off fireworks and make a lot of noise and, and uh, we take work off and we gather with family and friends and stuff like that and we have a good time. And, and, it's, and it's great. We're celebrating something that's really important, which is, which is freedom. Safety, security, prosperity, all those good things. But you know what? It's better to be a believer than to be an American. It's better to believe in Jesus Christ, to have your sins forgiven, and to be found in Him than even to be an American. It's better to have spiritual freedom than political freedom. So if you had to choose to be either A, a Christian in North Korea, or being a non-believing American, I hope that the choice, even if it would be difficult, would be obvious. It is better to be a Christian in North Korea than to not have God in your life and to live here in the United States. And being a Christian in North Korea means that your life can be taken from you at any time. They can shoot you on the spot. And that happens. There's not too many stories that come out of North Korea, but there are some. And there are some stories like that. There was one story of a, of a little kid who was walking with his friend and uh, this friend suddenly was arrested and shot right on the spot because he was a Christian. That's better. So I hope you realize how important it is that when Jesus says your sins are forgiven, how much that really means. This paralyzed man, this paralytic, needed forgiveness more than working legs. You and I need forgiveness more than working legs or eyesight or speech or anything for that matter. Forgiveness means more freedom than what we celebrate on the 4th of July. And Jesus is our forgiveness from God. And so the more we get to know Him through prayer, through scripture reading, through devotions, through living like Him, showing His love, His grace, His justice, and so forth, the more we will realize that He really is so much better than anything else. So your closing thought is, we need Jesus more than freedom, more than wealth, hap health, happiness, safety, food, shelter, or anything. It'd be better to give up anything and everything rather than to give up on the one who takes our sins away. Seek first his kingdom, and his righteousness. And then everything else will be, fall into place. Let's bow our heads and let's, let's pray about that. Lord God, it's easy for us to, to think about just 
our bodily needs and our daily activities and to forget that, Lord, we have spirits too and we have you in our lives. We pray, Lord, that we would realize the value of, of you in our lives and how the forgiveness that we have through your Son, Jesus Christ, is worth so much more than anything else that we have. All of these things that we treasure so much. We pray that we would seek you first and that, Lord, we would see how you provide and are faithful in all of the other ways that we would tend to worry about. And, Lord, please come through for us and be faithful to us. May our sins be forgiven always and may we put our trust in life and in death in Jesus Christ, your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen.